who when he was the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, he stabilized our banks. That today, you can keep your money in the bank and you go to sleep. A man who has come to Anambra State at this time, when we needed somebody like him. I am talking about a man who is doing things that has never been done anywhere in our country. In education, in health, in security, in youth empowerment, in every facet of our society. And a man who believes that the poor should not only breathe, but get up and run. I am talking about a man, about a man who says that Anambra State is an agenda with a deadline, and we are seeing it every day in this state. Our roads speak for themselves, and so many things is doing to touch the lives of the Anambra. Ladies and gentlemen, the rave of the moment, the trailblazer, the rave of the moment, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo CFI. We have in our midst the Deputy Governor of Anambra State, who is here, ever ready to support Mr. Governor, to make sure that the dreams they have from the Anambra is actualized. Dr. Onyeka Chukun Ibezim, please put your hands together for him. The former Governor of Anambra State is here. I am talking about the first female governor in the entire sub-Saharan Africa, Her Excellency Dame Veji Etiaba. Mama Nambra, you're welcome. <laughs> the former governor of Anambra State, Chief Willie, Mada Brochukwobiano is here, probably represented by his principal secretary, talking about uh, Chief Sir Willie Mokoye. The Speaker of the Anambra State House of Assembly is here, ladies and gentlemen. I am talking about a speaker with swag. I make bold to say this. Ladies and gentlemen, right Honorable Sonto Chuku Udeze is in our midst. Mr. Speaker. We also have the Deputy Speaker of the Anambra State House of Assembly, right Honorable Chuma Okoye. Welcome. Her Excellency Iom Bianca Odumegu Ochuku is here, the former Nigerian ambassador to Spain. Your Excellency, you're welcome. And we also have in our midst, ladies and gentlemen, the former Deputy Governor of Anambra State, who walked in tandem with the man that we are celebrating today, talking about uh, His Excellency. Chief, Dr. Che Duemeka. You're welcome. Uh, Chief SNY is also here. The former secretary to the state government of Anambra State who worked also with uh, His Excellency Dr. Chimoke Mbadenju. Welcome, welcome. Also in our midst is the wife of the former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Her Excellency a former Ekweme, my you're welcome. And now, an illustrious son of Anambra State, an extraordinary Nigerian, Ezbongwa Anambra, who is going to be chairing this event. Ezbongwi Hala, Muchala Mucha. I'm talking about uh, Dr. ABC Ochiako. Please put your hands together for the chairman of the occasion. The former Minister for Women Affairs and Social Development, Federal Republic of Nigeria, is also here. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Mrs. Iyom Josephine Mwogo and Neni. Please put your hands together. Adezaka, you're welcome. The National Vice President of Hanes Ndibo, 
South East is also here. Chief Damian Okeke Ogene. The former Deputy Speaker of the Anambra State House of Assembly is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about uh, the man who is currently representing the good people of Ihala in the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Pascal Abodike. Welcome. The judges, my lords, I want to welcome all of you to this great event. I may not mention you one after another, but please, I want to welcome all our judges who are here to grace this occasion. Please, you're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Our service commanders, I want to welcome all of you, the police, the civil defense, the immigration, the correction service, the NDLEA, the fire service, please, I want to welcome all of you as you joined us in this celebration this morning. Now, Ndigwe, because Ndigwe, Igwe, Igwe, Nwo, Obum, the Kwan Nane, Ndigwe, Kene, Muno, House of, of Assembly members that are here, I want to welcome all the House members that are here to grace this event. Please, I want to welcome all of you. Thank you so much for being here. I also like to welcome our TC chairman, Ebobunu Nofel Nanyaka Nono. Thank you so much for being here. Ndi Klachi, I want to especially welcome the Klachi to this great occasion because this is your thing. And also the local government chairman of our party, I welcome all of you to this great occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, is a moment for us to reflect on the life and times of a great man. Okay, I just saw, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished senator Uche Lilian Ekunife, PhD. Yes, he is also the DG of the Nigeria's Governors Forum Southeast. Ma, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. It is celebrating. Dr. Chingoke Clement Mbadeniju Odera, who was here. But before I do that, ladies and gentlemen, let me not forget to let you know that the children are here. Yes, having a missed Dr. Ada Mbadenuju, welcome. We also have Cheta Mbadenuju, welcome. And also Nabike Mbadenuju, you are welcome. Now, like I said before, we are celebrating a man who came and did his bit to set Anambra State in the motion that we're enjoying today. But very interesting to note that at a time like this in Anambra State, a man came and decided that things must be better. He has done it before for countries of the world and financial institutions. He came to Nigeria, he went to the central bank and transformed the central bank. And today, a lot of people will testify to the fact that you can have your money in our banks without any fears. I am talking about a man whose dealings in Anambra State is unprecedented. Health, education, Everywhere, Anambra State is indeed in safe hands. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, CFR. Okay, at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, it will be my, it will be my singular honor and privilege to invite an extraordinary Nigerian, a captain of industry, an employer of labor, is the Bongwanambra State, Mwaihala, to be precise, the chairman of this great occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as I invite Dr. ABC Ochiako for his chairman's opening remarks.
Your Excellency, Professor Chukuma Soludo, the Governor of Anambra State. Your Excellency, it's always a pleasure to be around you and it gladdens our heart of all that you're doing. You're indeed an embodiment of Solution himself. I'd like to thank you and members of your team. The Deputy Governor, I also salute you. I see the Speaker of the Anambra State House of Assembly. Quite a lot of dignitaries are seated, but let me preemptively stand on the protocol that has been very well established by the Master of Ceremony, but I will also recognize one or two dignitaries as I see them. I'd like to, in a very special way, recognize the Speaker of Anambra State House of Assembly. I'd like to recognize the former Governor of Anambra State, the first a woman who did that function, Her Excellency Mrs. Veji Etiaba. We're looking forward that many more women will ascend to that office. I also would like to recognize the distinguished Senator, Iyom Euche Ekunife. I also see the former Secretary to Anambra State Government, who is also seated, who worked very closely with uh, Dr. Sisim Badunuju. I see also Her Excellency Ambassador Bianca Ojuku. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to use my own member of the House of Representative and the former Deputy Governor of Anna, Deputy Speaker of Anambra State, Honorable Pascal. Abodike as a reference point to recognize the rest of the members of the members of the House of Representatives who are here. I also would like to, in a very special way, recognize His Excellency late Dr. Sisi Mbadiju's family, who is very well represented here by his children, Dr. Ada from the United States, Cheta, who has been all over the place, and Nana and the rest of them. I'd like to also say that Ndigwe are very well re represented, but let me use the Uzu Oka as a reference point to recognize and salute all of you. I'm sure also many people uh, may be here from the state judiciary and legal luminaries who are here. I therefore thank all of you for coming. Ndianambra Ekene Munu. In a very special way, let me once again thank the Governor of Anambra State for the great homage and tribute that they have accorded His Excellency Dr. Sisi Mbadiriju, who indeed was a governor that deserves to be celebrated. I would have wished that this celebration had happened as much as possible when he was still alive because that would have gladdened him. But be that as it may, I'm sure that the spirits do see and His Excellency Dr. Sisi Mbadiriju will be very glad at the level of celebration and the way the Anambra people have uh, welcomed these last days. We're going to be giving him in terms of tribute and ceremonies. Dr. Mbadiriju, I spoke about him in Anambra State and I did write in my eulogy about him. But one of the things I like to emphasize anytime I have the opportunity to speak about him is his fear of God. Dr. Mbadiniju was indeed a spontaneous pastor. Anytime you met him for anything, no matter what the subject matter is, Dr. Mbadiniju will always center it around God. And I'm sure those who worked very closely with him during his time as the governor of Anambra State, will agree with me that those his Monday prayers, and sometimes even more once in a week, actually was very significant in the way and manner he directed the affairs of Anambra State. Thank you. Another thing that people would very easily see about Umbadiju is his humility. 
this man ran a very open government. He had a very open government, open door policy. He was very easily approachable. He opened his arms for the big and the small. But more importantly, for the services of Anambra people, Mbadinuju was extremely committed to transformational development in the state. Most of these things have not been spoken about, but it's important for those of us who know him to highlight some of them. I recall that immediately Mbadinuju took over government. In fact, part of his manifesto was his program for infrastructural development. Mbadinuju mapped out all of the roads in Anambra State. Many of them he awarded the contracts. A good number of these he completed but quite a number of them he had actually mapped out but were not done. But quite a lot of the programs he did can still be seen today. He liked housing, so the Udoka housing estate is thanks to Mbadiriju's vision. The State House of Assembly, the present uh, government house, the lodge, if you recall, I don't know the state of completion of that project, but Mbadiriju conceptualized and started the new Anambra State Lodge. One of the biggest programs, because once you develop human capital, you have already developed the state and the nation. It is thanks to Mbadiniju that the Anambra State University of Technology was converted to a full-fledged university to become the Anambra State University of Technology. It is now, thank you, it's now the Chukwemeka Odumegu University with multiple campuses. I, I might add that his dream was that the main campus should have remained at Uli, but the rest is history and it is food for thought for His Excellency, the Governor, and members of the State of Assembly. Because Moabuonyuli, and we know what uh, Mbadnuju and his administration had gazetted in the law at that time. But be that as it may, the important thing is that it is a very important institution for Ndia Nambra. Another thing that Mbadiniju must be remembered for is that he gladdened his heart in those days to, and he prided himself as the governor who has brought Anambra State to become one of the states amongst the oil producing states. But you see, thank you, it goes a very long way to tell you the kind of person His Excellency Dr. Mbadnuju was. It was just through a very casual discussion I had with Dr. Mbadnuju that I pointed out to him that there were two oil blocks that were initially owned in those days by ELF in Anambra State. He asked me the names of the blocks I gave him. At that point, he then immediately commissioned what he called the Energy committee in Anambra State and made the late Mrs. Okoye the chairman of that committee. The rest is history, but that is what gave rise to the Orange Petroleum that we are hearing about today. He did this very, very selflessly, but we pray God that those oil blocks will continue to flow and add to the prosperity in Anambra State. Odera is a man of good nature, especially towards his family, especially towards every human being he comes across. I am sure that one of the greatest challenges His Excellency had when he was governor was the issue about security. In those days, it was such a gallantry thing to say that you came to Anambra State because armed robbers had taken over the place. But it is thanks to Odera and his tenacity with fighting this heinous crime that he completely controlled armed robbery in Anambra State. And it used to be the case that Anambra State, thank you, moved from being the most insecure state to becoming the most secure state in, in the country. Indeed, Mbadinuju was honored severally with various awards in those days in uh, uh, Abuja. While I spoke in, 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 in Abuja, I brought out one of the things that made Mbadnuju very, very sad. 
but obviously, again, brought out the kind of person he was. And this is when Mbadiju was falsely accused of having transferred $9 million of Anambra State wealth to somewhere in Russia. Somehow, this I was involved because once anything happened around Odera, I always was called upon. But one of the things, and I'm very glad to say, that after a proper and thorough investigation and inquiry, Odera was investigated and was found to be clean. And I was very happy. Thank you. Those of us who went with him came out with our heads high. And Odera was, it was like a heavy load was lifted off his shoulders. And I'm sure that those who gave those false accusations against him would indeed be putting and hiding their heads in shame. As we give Odera the last goodbyes, we pray the good Lord to grant fortitude to his family, particularly his wife and children. I pray that all of the legacies he's left in Anambra State will indeed be the beginning for very many things that will be accomplished in this state. One of the last things I would like to say is that Mbadunuju did all of the things that he did with very, very meager revenue in those days. I recall that the very first allocation Mbadunuju got from the federal government was just barely 500 million naira. And at that time, you know how very expressive Mbadunuju was? He just screamed and said, hey, alone was almost 400 million naira. So he was left with very little to do what he had to do. And despite that, he was determined to succeed. I would like to also say that the politicians, the political class in this state, Obadiju respected them very tremendously. He attended to all of their functions. He attended to their needs. He made sure that any time they called upon him, he answered them. And that is why Odera Odego remained very, very clear in everybody's minds. But Miju was obviously one of the best educated men on the face of the earth, very eloquent, very erudite, a very prolific writer. But Miju would sing and sing and sing, and you give him everything you have. One of the last days I met him when he was already um, challenged health-wise, immediately I came, even though he had some challenges, he called me by name. He was with his wife at that time. But one of the parting uh, gifts he gave me, I must say, was singing. Even though he was on sick bed, he got up and he was singing and dancing. And that is one of the things he knew how to do best. Mbadunuju praised and thanked God with his voice, with his talents in instruments and the rest of them. So I'm sure that we'll be missing him. The Anambra state people will miss him. His family will miss him. Ihiala local government will miss him. Uli people will miss him. Nigeria as a nation have lost a very great man. May God grant him eternal rest and grant fortitude to his family through Christ our Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, more round of applause for Dr. ABC Ojako, the chairman of this occasion. We will now go to the biography documentary on His Excellency, Dr. Late Dr. Chinwoke. Clement Mbadinuju Odera, please, fast. From the rustic village of Omwako in Uli, Ihiala local government area of Anambra State, Southeast Nigeria, to the bustling metropolis of Lagos, and finally to the gleaming skyscrapers of New York City, 
USA. Chimwoke Mbadino Ju's journey was nothing short of extraordinary. Blocked from his rural environment in mid-1966, he defied odds to rise from university student to lecturer, doctorate holder, associate professor, and law degree recipient. His triumphant return to his beloved country home of Uli was marked by his meteoric rise to the governorship, a rare fate that cemented his legacy as a brilliant and determined man. In 1982, at the ancient kingdom of Uli in Anambra State, Nigeria, the then Igwe Gregory Abasiri honored one of its pillars with a chieftaincy title for his outstanding contributions to the development and growth of the community. Shattering expectations, Chimwoke Clement Mbadinuju chose the simple title, or there are, which means what God has written is written. I would say that uh, he was a gentleman by Isaac. And uh, in our time, we don't give any, any hard person any title. And the Igwe found him worthy of being confined such that and he was made the, the, in, the he was confined with that title, Odera, one of food. Odera as a choice of title reflected his deep faith and belief in the power of destiny. He understood that whatever happened in the life of a person was ordained by God and this conviction sustained him through many challenges, including his political career as the governor of Anambra State from 1999 to 2003. In the humble household of Benjamin and Agnes Mbadinuju in Omaku village in the town of Wuli, Nigeria, where the tailor's needle danced and the lay reader's voice echoed in the Anglican church, a future leader was born on June 14, 1945. Chimuke Mbadinuju grew up in a household where faith and discipline were woven into the tapestry of daily life. Inspired by his father's passion for education and his early interactions with Christian missionaries, Chimuke Mbadinuju achieved academic excellence from his humble beginnings in the local mission school of Uli to the prestigious halls of Cornell University, New York, USA. At the tender age of 14, Chimwoke gained admission to the Bishop Lasbury Teachers Training College where he excelled and obtained his Teacher's Grade 2 certificate in 1963. His outstanding performance earned him a teaching appointment at Bishop Lasbury College. Three years later, he secured admission to the State University of New York, Newport, USA on a full scholarship. As God would have it, Omo ndi wa chana abo, di na wunye, kuzi iri haa oko, ni hile taon. Ndi wa chana abo, di na wunye. So haa furoka, bre no wane maade, we somba, no ye jegu wa oko, no budo yibo. The plan na, a man send off na primary school, di na wudi bai. He went, he went to New York. Odera's brilliance continued to manifest itself at the State University of New York, where he earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science in 1969. He then proceeded to Ohio State University, Athens, Ohio, where he obtained a Master of Arts degree in Government specializing in international affairs in 1970. In 1973, at the age of 28, Chiwoke Mbadinuju reached the pinnacle of his academic achievements by earning a PhD in government from Cornell University specializing in international law and relations. Remarkably, Odera earned full scholarships for all his degrees, a testament to his brilliance and God's favor. An avid sport enthusiast, he was selected to the All-American University Football, also known as soccer, the first team that represented the United States in an international exchange program at the Junior Olympics in Europe. 
He was probably the first Nigerian to play soccer against Real Madrid Football Club at its home stadium in the spring of 1970. Despite his outstanding academic achievements at a young age, Odera's insatiable thirst for knowledge propelled him to pursue further studies at the University of Southampton, England in 1975. He earned a Bachelor of Laws degree, LLB, followed by a Barrister at Law, BL, from the Nigerian Law School, Lagos, in 1979. Although armed with four solid academic qualifications from renowned institutions, Odera embarked on a distinguished career in a variety of fields. In 1969, while still a student, he secured a job as an administrative assistant at the State University of New York. He rose through the ranks to become a graduate assistant in the Department of Government at Ohio State University in 1970. 1974, he was an assistant professor at the State University of New York and was promoted to associate professor the following year. In 1975, at the age of 35, he became head of the Department of African and Black Studies at the State University of New York. In 1977, Odera returned to Nigeria and began a successful career as a journalist as an international affairs correspondent with the Daily Times of Nigeria Limited. He rose to become the editor of Times International Magazine in 1979. With the return of civil rule in 1979, Odera was appointed CEO of Star Printing and Publishing Company, publishers of Star Newspapers. He later became the Director of Planning at the Old Anambra State Governor's Office under His Excellency Chief Jim Ifai Chukun In 1980, he was appointed Special Assistant, Political and Administrative to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Ahaji Shehu Shagari, and was attached to the office of the Vice President, Dr. Alex Ikweme, where he served in this role for three years before the overthrow of the Shagari administration by the military junta on December 31, 1983. After returning to Nigeria in 1977, Odera set up his law firm in Onisha. He quickly rose through the ranks of the legal profession and became the national president of the Christian Lawyers Fellowship of Nigeria, Class 1. He also founded 12 chapters of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, FGBMFI, in Onisha and its environs, and eventually became both the national legal advisor and a member of its board. In 1998, following the death of General Sani Abacha, Nigeria's maximum military ruler, Odera decided to enter Nigerian politics. He believed it was time to fulfill his destiny and lead Anambra State to a better future. Despite skepticism, threats, and intimidation, Odera persevered and secured the gubernatorial nomination of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. He then went on to win the general election in 1999. We were foundation members of PDP in just 1998. And, uh, and since then, uh, for four years, I became governor of Anambra State, and we did well. As governor of Anambra State, Odera faced the challenging task of rebuilding a state that had been ravaged by years of military rule. On the third, he plunged headlong into the task with a firm belief in God's authority over his life. Notable among Odera's numerous achievements as governor of Anambra State were the following. He cleared the backlog of salaries and wages owed civil servants and government workers by the last military administration and even paid workers Christmas bonus. He eradicated ghost worker syndrome and thus re-established the hope, trust, morale and dedication of the state workers in their government again. He massively developed and provided essential infrastructure such as housing, roads, water, electricity, schools, 
hospitals and healthcare centers, especially in the state capital, Oka, and other major cities around the state. He effectively arrested the fraudulent practices in contract schedules and ensured equitable distribution of political offices among the geopolitical zones in the state, as well as lifting the ban on promotion of civil servants. The establishment of the Anambra State Vigilante Services, AVS, was perhaps one of Odera's greatest achievements. Its creation and sustenance ensured peace and security all over the state hitherto, overrun by criminals and hoodlums. In terms of housing and other physical structures, other built among numerous others, the new government house complex, Oka, known as Six Place, the Civic Center, now renamed Professor Dora Akunyele Women Development Center, the Judiciary Complex, Oka, the Legislative Quarters, and the Administrative Complex of the State House of Assembly, Oka, the Anambra State Liaison Office Complex at Central Area, Abuja, Federal Capital Territory, the Governor's Lodge Complex, Asokuru, Abuja, and the Civil Service Commissioner's Quarters, Oka. His administration laid the groundwork and eventual institution of free and compulsory primary and secondary education in Anambra State in a desperate but necessary effort to increase male enrollment in schools and also set up the state primary and secondary education boards as supervisory bodies for the schools. Odera established the Anambra State University, now known as Chukwemeka Odumewu Ojuku University, with campuses at Uli and Imarium, to help provide tertiary education for the teeming population of Anambra indigenous in search of knowledge. Unknown to many, Odera procured licenses for two oil blocks for Anambra State and established the Orient Petroleum and Gas Corporation, thus making Anambra one of the oil producing states. Odera's administration made significant progress in rebuilding Anambra State's infrastructure, improving education and healthcare, and creating jobs for the people. He also established a number of welfare programs to help the poor and vulnerable. Mbadi Niju's administration is widely credited with laying the foundation for Anambra State's transformation into a thriving economic and social hub. His legacy continues to inspire and motivate leaders across Nigeria. Despite the lies and deceit spread by his detractors, Odera's performance as governor of Anambra State was widely praised by notable citizens, the clergy and the federal government representatives. President Olushegu Obasanjo himself was impressed with what he saw during his visit to the state, saying, I am satisfied with what I saw on ground. Anambra State even won a gold medal from the federal government for security of lives and properties during Odera's governorship. In addition to being an excellent family man and community leader, Odera was a great statesman who exemplified what a good politician should be, honest, God-fearing, and with the overall interest of his people at heart. I'm sorry, I have on any toes. Indeed, Chimwoke Mbadinuju epitomizes a man from humble beginnings to the heights of power, a man of faith, brilliance, and determination. Adieu Chimwoke Mbadinuju, a colossus of Nigerian politics, a beacon of hope for his people, and a true man of destiny. Odera, Odego. Yes. Yes, sir. Please, a round of applause. Mr. Governor, I want to crave your indulgence to please recognize in amazed the national president of our SATU, Honorable Barrister Titus Abudo, and other presidents general of our communities. Please, you're welcome to this great occasion. I will not forget to mention uh, that we have uh, the State Working Committee of APCA here present, and then not leaving out the 
SSG of Anambra State and other members of ESCO that are here, please, you are all welcome. Now, at this juncture, I want to invite the deputy governor that worked with Odera is here in our midst. So, ladies and gentlemen, join me as I welcome to speak to us for just two minutes, sir, uh, His Excellency Chief Dr. Shedu Emeka Ikenganam. Please put your hands together for him as he comes to talk to us for just two minutes, please. Your Excellency, the Governor of Anambra State, the Chairman of the Cushion, please permit me, distinguished gentlemen, to stand on the established protocol because of want of time. You are all welcome. On this solemn occasion, we gather to bid farewell to a figure of influence and a servant of the people, Dr. Chimoke. Clement Mbadiniju, affectionately known as Odera, I express my gratitude to the Anambra State Government for affording me the opportunity to share a few reflections. For those unfamiliar, I am Dr. Chinedu Emeka, privileged to have served as Deputy Governor alongside Dr. Mbadiniju from 1999 to 2003. History, they say, is written by the victorious. Anambra State stands as a testament to the victories of, achieved by Mbaneju during his tenure. Even two decades after his departure, remnants of the solid foundation he laid continue to shape Anambra State. The iconic elephant tusks at the government house entrance symbolic of the strength and character of Ndenambra, were brought into existence by the vision of Dr. Mbadiniju. In the spirit of foresight, Odera established Orient Petroleum Company at the onset of his administration, paving the way for Anambra to become an oil-producing state. This strategic move reflects his commitment to the future prosperity of Anambra State. In the realm of education, Dr. Mbaniju initiated the Anambra State University, a testament to his unwavering commitment to educational development. On a personal note, I enjoyed the collaborative relationship with Odera. During his absence, he entrusted me with key responsibilities, including representation at various important fora. Under his guidance, I superintended the local government and chieftaincy affairs ministry, a testament to his unique leadership approach. The exhaustive list of Dr. Mbadivi's achievements during his tenure is a subject for historians. Today, I emphasize that history is written by the victorious. Reflecting on our governance journey, we recognize that certain decisions had unintended consequences, which spurred unforeseen benefits from the Anambra. Since then, our collective resolve has ensured that no godfather would ever dominate Anambra state politics again. Subsequent governors have learned that the electorate holds the power, so they find the principle that the governor is the employee and the electorate the employer. In conclusion, as we bid farewell to Dr. Chinwo Kimbaniriju, let us remember not only the challenges faced, but also the triumphs achieved during his tenure. The lessons learned from those times 
have shaped the political landscape of Anambra State, empowering the citizens to hold their leaders accountable. As we mourn, let us also celebrate the enduring spirit of Indianambra and the progress that has been made. Dr. Mbadoujou's legacy will forever be a part of Anambra's history. And as he would say, it shall be well with Anambra State. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, guests, for your time and reflection. May we find solace in the enduring strength of our community. God bless us all. Thank you, Mr. Dom. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a round of applause for him. His Excellency Chief Dr. Chedu Emeka Ikenganam, the Deputy Governor that worked with His Excellency Dr. Chinwoke Mbadenoju. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, it is time to hear from the man who is here now. Now that Anambra State needed soccer, needed somebody to lift us out of obscurity. A man who has come for us to breathe, not just breathing, so that Anambra State, the poor, will run. Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo CFR, Mr. Solution. Please be seated. Please be seated. Your Excellencies, um, I think the protocol is uh, the, the protocol list is quite a long one. Uh, distinguished Chairman of the event, Ndigwe um, Ekenemon. I think it's just fair for me to say I rest on the existing protocol. Um, this is supposed to be a very short, solemn event to put on record that Anambra will never forget. So I want to start by thanking all of you who have left whatever you are doing all over the country and made the sacrifice to join us today to give honor to whom honor is due. Someone who served this state for four good years. As I said yesterday, I paid quite a bit of tribute to him. And this morning or this afternoon, I'm not here to repeat them, nor to repeat the things that have already been said. I think the chairman of this event eloquently wrote out his many accomplishments, amongst others. I'm not going to go to repeat them. The documentary that we just watched also paid adequate tribute to his life and times and also major accomplishments to our state. I'm not going to repeat them. I had a written speech, which is down there, for me to give, but I'm not going to read it. I have only come out to say on behalf of myself, my family, and the great people of Anambra State, to say to Mbadin, uh, uh, the late Dr. Shimwoke Clement Mbadinoju, to simply say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To say thank you to him and to say that we will never forget. He came. He lived a life of impact. Because it is not how long, not very many, many people will be privileged to live the life of service. Coincidentally, I said it yesterday, I came 
our paths crossed, if I remember, about 1981. I was then a freshman student at the University of Nigeria and a student activist, um, one of the founding members of the Akuemi movement and the student leader of the National Party of Nigeria. Then he was assistant to uh, the president and working with Dr. Alex Akuemi. I used to see him in the house of late Dr. Uzwa Bunwa, and we used to reminisce. It was very encouraging then. Then he served as governor of Anambra for four years, and coincidentally again, I just remembered when we were talking about his title, Odera, that when I was campaigning, all through the time I was campaigning, those of you who were with us all around, remember that my commencement of every campaign began with a song. Reflectively, I wasn't even thinking about, I couldn't make the connection, but now I can see the dots. Um, they say those who stay together influence each other. Dr. Mbadnojo lived an impactful life. And like I said, now here, we've come here today to simply say thank you to Dr. Odera. From what we've seen from the documentaries and the testimonials given, he came, he saw, and they say he conquered. Two things that stand out to me personally, the area of security of life and property. Many people forget very easily, but those of us who were old enough at that time to remember that as at the time that Odera ascended office as governor, you could not come to Anambra State. I remember at times I would be driving down from uh, Enugu. Immediately you cross the boundary of Amansi, welcome to Anambra State. Your heartbeat will rise. Because you were not sure you were going to go back with your car. You were not sure you could even, I mean, uh, in then people have forgotten that in the nights, women will leave their homes with their children to go to sleep in churches for fear that armed robbers or these criminals would invade them and rape women in front of their children. I think the turning point was when they then accosted the luxury buses and literally killed everybody there in the broad daylight just to be able to rob them. Then Odera said enough was enough and the Bakasi boys came and Anambra State went from being a totally, uh, I mean, uh, if you like, a war zone in terms of criminalities and so on, to become that state that you could leave your wallet and then go and have peace. Odera, we've come today to say we will not forget. It just reminded me when we took over and eight local governments were in total control by the hoodlums. Total, the unknown government, having camps, they've graduated from being just mere uh, criminals and armed robbers to now taking over territories, collecting taxes, and so on and so forth. Eight local governments. I couldn't even campaign in much of them, including in my own local government. But I think we are giving them a run for their money. And Anambra will save. But I want to put on record to Odera that we will never forget. You showed the way. The Anambra Vigilante Service remains. We've been reinvigorated, improved upon, and they are getting even more daring and deadly by the day. And the criminals know that they are there. I will never forget all the litany of stuff that you have done 
be it the judicial, the judiciary complex or the, uh, the uh, House of Assembly complex or the various estates, the Dora Kunyale Development Center, the Okuemes Square, the Anambra State University. Yes, it is said that politicians care about the next election and statesmen care about the next generation. Dr. Mbadinoju cared about the next generation and that's why he established the Anambra State University. Yes, you taught us to pray the presence of God. Every Monday, Anambra people gathered to pray and the theme was that it shall be well with Anambra. Today, as we say thank you to you, I want us to put on record that today, we not only pray on Mondays at the Governor's Lodge, every day we begin each day with a church service. And I want to thank you, Dr. Mbadnuju. Every Mondays we are led in service by the Pentecostals, every Tuesdays by the Anglicans, Wednesdays and so on by the Catholics. Yes, that Anambra is truly, and today when the Anglican, the CCN block of Cannes, Anambra State Chapter, gave us an award as father of ecumenism in Anambra State. It's all going back again to the foundation that you led, Odera, and we say thank you very much, Odera. It is indeed not just well with Anambra, but well with your soul. Amen. It is well with your soul, Odera, and we've come to say thank you. Odera, we can go on and on, we will never forget. Yes, in the midst of this, we are all mortals. Everyone who has had to do anything, if you have ever strived to do anything in life, you have had some successes and some failings. No mortal is perfect. Perfection only belongs to God. But the important thing is that you try. You do your best while you have the chance. Many people, for many people, Odera lived a life of impact and our state will never forget. And I would dare to say that a vast majority of us, for a vast majority of Ndia Nambra, Odera will remain, will remain evergreen in our memories. But let me then I want to end with a word or two to the critics. There were those who were unrelenting. I know and I remember that there was a time during his regime, I think the Labour Congress or so literally paralyzed the state and for about a year or so we were on strike and schools were closed. And many people just choose only to remember that. And this is what I call revisionism of history. And to them, and the rest of the critics, I saw that in his, when he was, I mean, on this documentary, where he was referring to the critics. And as I was seeing this on the documentary now, something struck me, and I got my phone to call up. What Theodore Roosevelt, said to the critics in 910, 1910, in France. And I want to end with this. And to the one or two percent of the critics, this is for you. And he reads, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done be them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, and who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error or shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? 
who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. This is for the critics of Mbadenojo. And I want to say to him, Dr. Sisi Mbadenojo, thank you. We will never forget. Anambra will never forget. You will ever live. And tomorrow, we will have the singular honor then to say goodbye. It is well with your soul. Thank you very much and God bless you. A round of applause for Mr. Governor. Yes. This is Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please you may now be seated. Thank you. Thank you. This is from a man who is humble. A man who understands what it means to lead his people. Thank you Mr. Governor. And now Ladies and gentlemen, let's run fast to the item number eight on the program, which is a video tributes and condolences. Please, this should be done very fast, please. Odera was ahead of his time. He was an erudite scholar. This is what I'm about to say now. May not be very popular, Dr. Chumwa Kembari as governor of Anambra, did very well. It is not easy for one to be the governor of Anambra State. Odera has run a very good race. And whenever he went into something, he put his entire heart and soul. And he went to one of the best schools each time, Cornell University, Columbia State University. If you want to go class now in a year, very, very brilliant chap. In the course of my studies, I realized a few things. One, he was a kind person. Maju patronized politicians. He remembered politicians. He remembered civil servants. He remembered the stakeholders. Maju remains one of the best leaders you can think of in the whole world. He's a country's resolution expert. Within, within his 100 days in office, he was able to resolve an intractable problem that engulfed three communities in Anambra State. Maju was the only governor that paid 13th month and had all the local government first light charge on their federation accounts. Maju, in the interest of the state, Anambra and Lucas and the world, opted to leave his second term, that enter his second term, and go and remove Bakasi and keep the rule of Anambra State in jeopardy. So he, he suffered because of us. I don't think these were actions of a weak person. He was a father to all of us. It was not fashionable then for a state government to go and acquire two huge oil blocks. But he decided to make it the business of Anambra State to own the oil under our feet and applied and got OPM 951 and 956. Mbadu tried his possible best to show service to humanity. Despite the challenges that he faced, I find him a very down-to-earth person, a friendly person, always full of uh, life, always uh, joking about, um, you know, uh, just bringing soccer and happiness to people around him. Dr. Chimuke Mbadloju, a core humanist of a governor died. His kind of mindset was different from the interpretation people later gave him after he left office. That's not 
his personality at all. But in all those times, Odera was very resolute in God. He has always said that everything that was happening at that time was the will of God. Rustic village of Omwako in Uli, Ihiala local government area of Anambra State, Southeast Nigeria, to the bustling metropolis of Lagos, and finally to the gleaming skyscrapers of New York City, USA, Chimwoke Mbadinuju's journey was nothing short of extraordinary. I've said this, what I'm about to say now, privately and publicly. May not be very popular with a lot of people. But you know, in history, oftentimes revisions, people get into revisionism. Uh, but I want to say without equivocation that by every measure, Dr. Chumwoken Barinojo, as governor of Anambra, did very well. People have very short memories. Uh, for historical accuracy, about 16 of us ran for the governorship then. Uh, but some of us, you will imagine, ran unsuccessfully for the governorship. So at the end of which, uh, he picked some of us to serve in his government. And I was uh, privileged to, be, uh, to have been asked to serve as a secretary to the government of Anambra State. And indeed, for the four years that uh, Dr. Banuju uh, served as governor of Anambra. I was with him all through. In fact, there were two people who stood out of all the lots, and, and these these were uh, Dr. Sisi Mbadinju and um, and um, Professor ABC Wosu. Their credentials were very impeccable. But uh, Dr. Mbadinju remained consistent with his interest. I must say that uh, at the time they came and the candidate who he was going to be his running mate did not quite measure up as much as Mbadinju was at the time. So I had an open and frank discussion with the two of them and my view was that, look, if you really want to make it to the governorship of Anambra State, why don't you as a team put your best foot forward? And I had the conviction that Mbadinju, based on his experience and qualification, was their best foot forward. So on that basis, I decided to support him by the and encouraged him. The rest is history. He ran one of the uh, most effective campaigns and he emerged ultimately as the governor of Anambra State. Let me start foundational. He happened to have been the first governor after the, um, I mean, and the transition to civil war. We know the circumstances in which Anambra State was. In fact, then I was living in Enugu. Every time I was coming, visiting Anambra then, immediately before he became governor, once you cross Aman Sea, welcome to Anambra, your heartbeat will rise. You are very good, you are not sure if you are going to go home with it anymore. That was the time, the kind of criminality, people forget that's the time these hoodlums, would, I mean, would take a whole luxury bus and kill everybody in there when they were looking for money. But then he decided that, you know, only the deep can cut to the deep. The bad could also get to the bad and so on. They think these guys didn't make themselves amenable to rule of law and you needed the non-rule of law approach. So he brought in the Bakasi. Many people forget this. Under him, uh, Anambra Vigilante Service was uh, better to um, checkmate the activity, the activity, the activity, the activity. Thank you. Can you put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen? Video tributes and condolences of uh, this great man. Now, at this juncture, it will be my singular honor and privilege to invite the family of uh, His Excellency, late Dr. Chingwoke Clement Mbadinoju for late Dr. Mbadinejo's books and compendium of life and times to the Anambra State Government. Please, 
cheta mbari nuju lead this course yes we want to welcome the former deputy governor of Anambra state his excellency chief emekasi bodu you're welcome Mr. Governor, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, CFR. May I, Cheta Chingwoke Mbadinuju, on behalf of the Mbadinuju family, present to you some of the books of my late dad and the compendium of his life and times. We are grateful for all your support, sir. Please, a round of applause. Put your hands together. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, it's my honor and privilege to receive these books on behalf of the government and great people of Anambra State. Uh, three of them, God's kind of leader. I understand this book was written before uh, 1988 before he became governor 11 years after. And um, the subtitle to it is The Righteous and Responsible Man by Dr. C.C. Mbadnoju. The next is his The Journey into the Past, um, ordeal, ordeal of a state governor. Uh, I'm sure this book will tell it all. Uh, now we have the other one, um, which is um, Destiny Fulfilled, The Life and Times of His Excellency Dr. Chinwoke Clement Mbadnoju Odera. Um, well, what a time, what a day, what an event. Odera, Odego. Odera, Odego. Chukuma na, Afambono Chukuma. My initials, Busisi, Kia Bukusisi, Kia Mbuchukuma na Saludo, Chukuma na Waga Adie Tu Atata. Kekuma Uka Sisi, oh, there you go. Ifone Anam, never mind. So, 
chukuma mana oge adie to atata uh, omana at this hour at this moment we'll be assembling to thank him to thank him for the great life that he lived and for the legacies he has left behind the only thing we can promise him is that we'll make sure that those legacies never die that's the only way to mourn him that's the only way to the best way to say goodbye and so thank you very much i'll read them with great relish and probably we'll take on some more lessons uh, to keep anambra moving makana he prayed that it shall be well with anambra and we must ensure that it is well with anambra thank you very much and god bless you thank you thank you thank you thank you Well, Your Excellency, as the chairman of uh, this very solemn occasion, I would like to support His Excellency. What I would like to do, you know, when we were in secondary school and you write Bible studies, there were questions we were being asked. Who said this to whom and on what occasion? There were two phrases His Excellency, late Sisim Banuju, used very frequently. One was where each time he wanted to speak for the downtrodden, he would say, res ipso loquito. It speaks for itself. Each time he felt that someone was being treated unfairly, and you give him all of the evidence, he would say, res ipso loquito. I'm sure you'll see it in some of these books. One other thing he likes to say very frequently was, vox populi, vox dei. You know, Odera, Odego, I would like to support this publication to make sure that as many libraries in schools in Anambra State get it as possible. I will confer with the family to say what I will do. Thank you very much, and may his soul rest in peace. Amen. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so can you ladies and gentlemen put your hands together once again? It has indeed been a wonderful moment. Bidding farewell to this great Mwanambra. He came, like I said before, he saw and he conquered. Odera, Odego. Don't they number and well good luck in where Chukuma Saludo he believe in Ina Kona Ganiro. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's rise to once again pledge our allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria with the national anthem. Thank you. Thank you. Please, uh, as uh, Mr. Governor and other members of uh, the high table, the entourage leaves, please let's stay back here because we have refreshment. We have refreshment for everyone. So don't leave. Just stay back to make sure you grab something to eat before you leave. I am with refreshment. Unaka, Nana, Abuna, Mr. Governor, and entourage, Napo. Unechelo, dalono.